welcome to the special episode from Melitopol, Zaporizhia. We begin our show by showing you the special report on our interactions with the Chechen fighters going to their base camp and seeing how they're fighting alongside the Russian forces. Here is a special report. This is an India Today exclusive in an unknown dis uh, location in the hinterlands of Melitopol. These are Chechen fighters. Why are they here fighting this war between Ukraine and Russia? I'm being joined by Commander Murad over here who has the Russian flag, the markings of Z and the markings of being from Chechnya and being a Chechen. Commander Murad, thank you so much for joining us here on India Today. Why are the Chechens fighting this war? You also know that people from Chechnya also suffer from terrorist regime. We are not fighting against the Ukrainian people. We are not fighting against Ukraine. We are fighting against the Nazi regime because we know many stories of people's sufferings. And that's why we have come here to support them. We are not fighting against Ukraine. We are only supporting the people and we want to relieve people of the Nazi regime. The the fact that there is mixed information coming, Putin says, do not go capture Kiev, and we see Kadyrov who is insisting on Kiev. Is there a difference or is there one chain of command and the fighters are following that command? So it's nearly impossible to say that there is any confrontation between Putin and Kadyrov. Because Kadyrov is only a soldier of Putin and he is the highest commander of the Russian Federation. So it's not possible to imagine that Putin gives order and Kadyrov refuses. This is the chain of one system. Kadyrov is just a soldier of Putin. It's impossible to divide them. Chechen flags and the Chechen leader and the cars. We are here in one of the base camps and we'll be entering after meeting Commander Murad as to what the Chechen fighters are doing over here and how they're based out of here, how they're living. It is the month of Ramzan, so this is iftar time and uh, they just broke their fast and are eating, breaking bread with each other, sharing a meal. But you see, all prepared to ensure that they fight for the Russian side over here. Uh, it, it, the, there was a time when the Chechens were fighting the Russians, today they are fighting with the Russians. And like Commander Murad said, that they are taking orders not just from Ramzan Kadyrov, who is their president, president of Chechnya, but also their commander-in-chief, President Putin. And that's why the two flags over here represent exactly what the Chechen fighters are here to do. With the journalist Atir Autre in an undisclosed location in Melitopol, Gita Mohan for India Today. In our next report, we'll talk about how Russia is not just looking at denazifying, but also de-Ukrainizing the entire region that's captured and is beyond Donbass, Russianizing the captured territory. Zaporizhia. This is Melitopol where we are. One of the first areas that came under the control of the Russian forces. They came in from Crimea. Now it is very important to note where we are. 
This is the first time that our crew, that is Satya and I, have left the Donbass region. This is not the Donbass region. We're out of Donetsk and the first place, the first region that uh, that that is adjacent to the Donbass region is Zaprasia. A critical area, a very important region for uh, the Russian forces as also for Ukraine uh, because this again is on the shores of the Sea of Azov. So a very important uh, and critical uh, province or region for Ukraine. Another very important, in fact, the first most important point of uh, capturing Zaprasia is the nuclear plant, the largest in Europe. Uh, we're trying to go there and see what the situation is. As of now, they say that the situation is under control and is under Russian control. Ukrainians are on the other side of the Dnieper River and are trying very hard. They're on the north bank. Uh, the nuclear plant is in the south bank and they're trying very hard to capture it. Now in terms of placing, on the right is the Donbass. On the to my left is uh, the uh, Kherson region and Zaprasia is right in between. Up north or up towards the west because this is the east end is the Dnieper river and on the north bank or where the Russians are placed. So this entire area now with a natural geography of the Dnieper River is on this side controlled by the Russians, on the other side by the Ukrainians. So very critical place, but the bigger question over here. President Putin has said, and in the uh, in the negotiations part of, that one, Ukraine recognizes Crimea as part of Russia. Secondly, the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics are recognized as two. Then the larger question is, this entire area, Zaprusia, Kherson, Odessa, all these areas that are now, and Mykolai, where there's a big fight happening between the Russians and the Ukrainians, what happens to this region? The Zaprusia area is critical for Russia. Will they lose hold? Will they give up? Or will this continue to remain a part of Russian territory or, for that matter, uh, the, the breakaway faction and if that happens Ukraine certainly will be landlocked with no access to Sea of Azov or the Black Sea. We are here at the Victory Square in Melitopol. The irony, the yellow and blue still stands but the place now under Russian control. There was a pole right there with the Ukrainian flag which no longer stands. And this Victory Square has a statue of Tara Shevchenko, who was a poet and a national hero for the Ukrainians. Today, this you know, this the center, the cultural center, the Tara Shevchenko Center, has been converted into a city uh, council and where humanitarian aid is being provided. There are people who are, if you see, uh, there are people who are there signing up to get aid. Uh, humanitarian aid and assistance. While the city over here has not seen a uh, lot of damage because this is one of the first cities that was taken by the Russian forces from Crimea uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the people over here still are in the city. About 20% we're told have left Melitopol but most of them are still here but this is also a divided house. There is a mayor who's now been put in place, Mayor Galina, uh, by the Russian side. And Mayor Fedorov is no longer in the mayor's seat or for that matter in Melitopol. Zaporizhia is a very different area. Now we know that uh, the negotiations between Ukraine and Russia are to do with Donetsk, Luhansk and Crimea. Zaporizhia was never a part of the negotiations. If the negotiations succeed, will then Zaporizhia go back to Ukraine? Or is there a change in status that we can expect? And if that happens, in all probability, Ukraine and Russia will never be friends. 
Historically, our region was very, very close to Russia, not only mentally, but first of all, economically. Even before 2014, the ties were very, very close with Russia. There were enterprises which produced food and sold it in Russia. They promised that European markets will open, but it wasn't true. They did not open any market. That is why the economic situation in this region is difficult. So I think that Zaporozhia is a big industrial city and many working class people live there. They support the economically and political contacts with the Russian Federation. So it is possible to say the future is attractive for the people to have a close contact with Russia. A very important feature that we see in Melitopol is the blue and yellow. We see the Ukrainian flag colors everywhere and we've seen this in most parts of, the, of eastern Ukraine, uh, the emphasis of trying to be Ukrainian or being Ukrainian. Will the features of Melitopol change soon? <laughs> we hope that in future our city will blossom with many colors, not just yellow and blue. We have already started changing the colors like the Georgia ribbons, which was strongly forbidden during the Ukrainian time. So it is possible to say that in near future, the city will be colored by many colors. The fact is that at the end of the day, there has to be a flag here. Will it be Russian? Will there be a referendum over here? Or, because that will be violative of all international laws. So will there be a referendum which will not be recognized by the world? Or will there be elections over here wherein you could be a part of Ukraine with an understanding of autonomy? Now we have other tasks. The situation is not easy and is complicated. The first task is to improve the economic situation in the city. But truly, in near future, we will organize the referendum and it will be the decision of the citizen of our city, our region. If they want, we can be part of the Russian Federation. Anyway, we will ask people and they will decide. On that note, many thanks for speaking with us. There's more when we return after a short break. Welcome back to India Today. You're watching World Today. And on Spotlight this weekend is an exclusive conversation with Denise Pushilin, who is the leader of the Donetsk People's Republic. He speaks on what the situation is with regards to the fight with the Ukrainian forces. This is an India Today exclusive. I'm being joined by the president of the Donetsk People's Republic, a breakaway faction in Donetsk that is now recognized as an independent republic by Russia. Denis Pushilin joins us in this exclusive conversation. Let me begin with the latest development, sir. The attack and the, uh, in the railway station in Kramatorsk is something that has now caught the global attention, accusing Russia and the Donetsk region of attacking civilians. What's your reaction and response to civilians being killed in this attack in a railway station in Kramatorsk? Мы, к сожалению, сталкиваемся с множеством военных преступлений, с множеством провокаций со стороны Украины. We constantly face such provocations from Ukrainian army and such fake information and news. You also must have heard of the attack on a maternity hospital and a drama theatre in Mariupol. When we liberated Mariupol, there was no confirmation of such crimes. You also heard about the city of Bucha and the latest provocations from there. The first mass media who appears in such places of provocation are from Great Britain. It was Sky News. Today in Kramatorsk also, they were there and they had a broadcast from there. As we know that Kramatorsk was hit by Tochka U tactical missile system. I want to specify that this weapon is only used by Ukraine because of Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic and Russia. It is already outdated. 
We do not use such weapons. These are only used by Ukraine. Ukraine also hit our territories with these missiles. From the 17th of February, 24 such rockets were shot down by us. On March 14th, one fell in the center of Donetsk, and the result was that 21 persons were killed and 38 injured. It was shot down by our anti-missile system, but one of our cluster bombs exploded. This incident is happening because Ukraine wanted new pictures, since Bucha is already outdated and they want something hot, something new, right now to maintain these tensions. Ukraine really wants to minimize the refugees that are fleeing from Kremitorsk as they were fleeing from Mariupol, and they used these civilians as human shields. Are you, Mr. Pushilin, then accusing Ukraine of killing their own people? Мы осуждаем Украину все эти восемь лет, которые Украина бомбит. We have been accusing Ukraine already for eight years because Ukraine used weapons and personnel to fight with us, not the army but the locals, the residents, with the civilians. From the beginning of the escalation since 17th of February, 518 objects of infrastructure facilities were damaged, including hospitals, schools, etc. And I'm not counting the housing facilities here. They have completely destroyed a lot of them. Well, sir, what is your assessment of the situation on the ground? We see that uh, hard positions have been taken by both sides. When will then peace ever return to this region? The goal and the special military operation of the Russian Federation are clearly the aim of the special military operations was defined. It is to defend Donetsk and Luhansk territories, protect the citizens, denazification, demilitarization, neutral state of Ukraine as well as non-nuclear state status of Ukraine. These are simple conditions to ensure peace. But believe me, I have been negotiating with Ukraine for seven years, including the Minsk agreements. Ukraine is no place to negotiate because it is a puppet. They don't make decisions, that is why these conditions cannot and have not been met with. Ukraine is controlled by outside. This special military operation launched by Russia, which is a liberation operation for us, will remain until every aim is achieved. Thank you so much for speaking with India Today. That was Denise Pushilin speaking exclusively to India Today. With Vidhi Jela Satya Raut Ray in Donetsk, Geeta Mohan for India Today. With no end in sight to the Russian onslaught, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has offered a swap deal to swap top Putin aid for Ukrainian POWs. Nearly 50 days of war and no breakthrough in sight. Now, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has a new offer for his Russian counterpart. And this man is at the center of that offer. Viktor Medvedchuk is the head of the pro-Russian party and the most high-profile pro-Kremlin lawmaker in Ukraine. He was finally arrested on charges of treason as he was trying to escape abroad when the invasion began. In his latest proposal, Zelensky is willing to swap this top Putin ally for the Ukrainian prisoners of war held captive by Russia. I propose to the Russian Federation to exchange this guy of yours for our boys and our girls who are now in Russian captivity. It is very symbolic that Mr. Medvedchuk was detained on Cosmonautic Day. He has been hiding for 48 days, but finally, he decided to try to escape from our country. Well, for this astronaut, the famous Poekhali did not work out. Putin and Medvedchuk's friendship dates back to 2003. Over the decades, Medvedchuk used his friendship with Putin to hold his ground as one of Ukraine's most powerful backroom politicians. Medvedchuk has often visited Putin in Moscow and even joined him to watch Formula One races. As per reports, Medvedchuk was the top contender as Zelensky's replacement as Kremlin's puppet after invasion. A very close 
uh, aid in a way uh, or someone who's considered very close to the Russian president Vladimir Putin has been arrested here. Uh, Viktor Medvedchuk, he's been arrested. He's an opposition leader. The SBU, the Special Intelligence Unit, arrested him late last night. Putin, however, is unfazed and he asserted that Moscow would achieve all of its aims in Ukraine and will continue its war until all goals are met. Mind you, yesterday evening I was told that Ukrainian side has changed something again. I am not aware of what exactly yet. But such inconsistency in approaching key issues creates some difficulties in reaching the final agreement, acceptable for everyone in the course of negotiations. And until it happens, the military operations will continue until its full completion and achievement of the targets set as the start of the operation. The U.S. continues to criticize Putin for the onslaught on Ukraine. I call this genocide because it becomes clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out the idea of being there in Ukraine. And uh, the, mount, the evidence is mounting. They're different than it was last week. The more evidence is coming out of it. Literally, a horrible thing that the Russians have done in Ukraine. And we're going to only learn more and more about the devastation. Nearly 50 days and counting, the world is waiting and watching. When will this war end? With Gaurav Savant, Bureau Report, India Today. For the first time, US President Joe Biden has termed invasion of Russia into Ukraine as genocide. He has been attacking President Putin and has called him a war criminal as also a butcher. Here's a That's all on this special edition of World Today from Zaporizhia. Thank you for watching.